Hey guys, it's Hink here. And so one of the things that comes up all the time is the thought about cold showers. What is their role? Oh my gosh, is there a role for PE for cold showers? And so we're gonna get into the role and penile health of cold showers in general. There's actually a decent amount of literature that I think we can get a definitive answer for this. And so you definitely wanna stick around for this one. Before we get into it, if you could just take a quick second to just give this video a thumbs up. I know it's something that's free. It might not mean a lot to you, but it really means a lot to me and it helps the channel grow. I lost my penis in an ice bath. All right, guys, so the first paper we're going to talk about is actually the correlation between colder weather, and I know we're talking about cold showers here, but colder weather and erectile dysfunction. And believe it or not, there's actually a decent amount of published data. Now, it's not the best published data because, like, this paper here is based on the increased number of Google searches for erectile dysfunction in the wintertime, but there's a very strong correlation between colder winter weather and erectile dysfunction. You know I love my rat studies, and so this next study we're going to look at here looked at actually keeping these rats exposed for prolonged periods of time during the day to either 22 degrees celsius which is about 72 degrees fahrenheit versus four degrees celsius or about 39 degrees fahrenheit for about eight hours per day and they looked at actually the outcomes of the rats as far as like their erectile performance and what they found and so i'll read this to you is we observed decreased erection frequency meaning there was less frequent erections, okay? Prolonged erection latency, meaning it took longer to actually get a good erection. Decreased intercavernosal pressure, meaning there was less pressure in the penis, so poor erection quality. Then there were some other expressions that increased indications of decreased smooth muscle, so de decreased the healthy tissue and increased rates of actual dysfunction or signs that actually fibrosis was beginning to occur. So what they concluded, and I quote, meaning that cold stress is indeed correlated with erectile dysfunction. So already the literature is pointing to maybe we don't want cold showers if we're going to be doing especially things like PE with pumping, clamping, tugging, pulling, extending, etc. It might not be the best idea to pursue a cold shower afterwards. A key thing with this rat study is that they said that this literature doesn't necessarily translate because they low-key kind of tortured these rats, keeping them at four degrees Celsius without like little rat gloves and coats for like eight hours a day, guys. And most people aren't going to be just exposed to four degrees Celsius for prolonged periods of time. You're going to be inside. You're going to have a jacket. However, they do say people that work in the Arctic or have prolonged outside exposure during these cold temperatures are more predisposed to erectile dysfunction with cold temperatures. Here's another paper here. Now, what this looked at actually was the negative effects of cold water immersion. And so this specifically is talking about sperm quality and actually decreased testosterone. And so what they found was that there was decreased motility, viability, and sperm count with increases of abnormal sperm due to the chronic stress from cold temperatures. And what they found is that cortisone or your stress hormone increased while testosterone actually decreased, okay? Now, if you guys are looking for something to boost your testosterone naturally, we have our vitality here that actually works along a similar pathway doing the opposite to actually increase your testosterone, but you could consider checking that out. It is available on Amazon and LeviathanSubs.com. When we're looking at the literature specific to actually penile function, everything that I can come across says like, no, it's actually not a good idea to do that. However, there are specific caveats that we're gonna discuss in just a little bit. And so here are some of the additional points with cold plunges that I think need to be evaluated further. So number one, does it increase testosterone? So I just told you a paper that said, actually, no, it doesn't. And so here's another paper here. No, it does not increase testosterone levels. So if you go to some TikToker and he's like, oh, look at me, I'm on TikTok. Here's this one simple trick. Like cold plunges are not going to increase your testosterone. Like that's, that's just a fact of science. Now, could it help with muscle soreness, skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle soreness? Like, yeah, there actually is decent evidence that you know whether it be in runners or whether it be in other athletes that it actually can reduce muscle soreness like in this paper here but the key thing is that you need to be immersed in the cold water for uh, between 11 to 15 minutes that's what this study showed so if you guys are just like hopping in and take like a oh, 30 second cold shower and then hop out that's not going to do anything. And so specifically, as in this case, when you're looking at muscle soreness, yes, it can help if you stay immersed long enough. So what about circulation in general? Well, yes and no, because if you haven't seen my video on heat, you need to check it out. But there's something that's called a Finnish sauna. And what these guys will do is they will immerse themselves in cold water and then immediately go into a sauna 
and then cold water, and then a sauna. They will repeat this cycle over and over again. And so when you're actually repeating this cycle, like yes, there is evidence that it improves circulation. But the question at hand is, if I just take a cold shower, is it gonna help? And so no, you need to do this kind of hot, cold, hot, cold exposure to actually help with circulation. And obviously circulation is gonna help with overall penile health. So what about your immune system? Does it boost your immune system? Well, the evidence is actually pretty crappy that it does. There is more positive studies. There was this, I think a Dutch study or maybe a, maybe another Finnish study, maybe the Netherlands. Regardless, guys, it looked at actually people who had cold showers and, and their rates of calling out sick. And what it found was that the people that did take the cold showers did find themselves calling out sick less correlation not causation but there was a positive correlation and so there at least is some evidence to suggest that does it increase metabolism so yeah actually it does once again when done correctly when you use actually immersive therapy you can actually increase the amount of brown fat that you have brown fat is a healthy fat that actually helps with decreasing the amount of bad fat in your body and actually increasing your metabolism. The other thing that actual cold immersion therapy does, once again, we're not talking about cold showers, we're talking about actually like ice bath when you're immersed in it for longer periods of time, is that it can actually help resetting your dopamine pathway because it's almost like exposure to pain. Therefore, when you're not exposed to that pain, I'm not going to go into the science of it, but it can reset your dopamine system. So if for some reason you have corn-induced erectile dysfunction, which some might argue isn't a real thing, oh, come I can see you keyboard warriors now it can help with resetting your dopamine system the evidence is against cold showers now if you're looking for cold showers to potentially help you get bigger you know no it's it's not going to help you get bigger and we're going to go through the conclusion points but if you are looking for something that is actually based on real science i have my enlargement courts is available now i go through step by step everything from the data all the way through the instructions to post routine care it's all available now link is in the description if you're interested I recently posted on my subreddit r slash hink a guy who gained it half an inch in six months guys this this course is the real deal you're gonna have to work for it but only about 30 to 45 minutes a day so do cold showers help with pe not at all here's a few reasons off the top of my head one it causes a sympathetic nervous response so that will cause all the blood that should be in your penis particularly after a session of pumping or stretching to flow into your limbs, pulling away any of the nutrients from your penis into your arms. Then with that, there's that tissue contraction. And there's actually evidence to show that you want to be retaining that new shape as much as possible with soft tissues. So if we are focused on building up our penis, the last thing we really wanted to do is shrivel up. Granted, we need to know how cold cold actually is. You could be doing ice plunges. You could be doing just lukewarm, like room temperature, showers. That's going to have two separate responses. But ideally, you want to be taking warm showers before or after PE just to make sure you do not have any tissue contraction. Any of the hormonal benefits from cold showers really aren't that great, especially compared to just diet and exercise. So, yeah. Check out my channel, BD Peak Melfus. What are my final takeaways? Number one, if you're going to take an ice bath, make sure it's between 11 to 15 minutes. A cold shower is not going to cut it, okay? And so, you know, you need to be careful, actually, because if you're exposed to actual an ice bath, that actually shock can be bad for your heart, and it can cause some arrhythmias and sometimes even heart attacks. So if you're going to do that, be very careful. But if you're going to go with cold water immersion, you need to do it for a prolonged period of time if you're trying to get some of these benefits. More importantly, does it help with PE? I absolutely think it does nothing, okay? That's my personal take. Now, if you have crazy amounts of edema after like doing something like a pump, like yes, maybe a cold wrap, not necessarily getting your whole body in a cold shower, but a cold wrap could potentially help to reduce that edema. So cold plunges can have some benefits, but in general, I just don't think it's particularly helpful for BE, but that's my take. Let me know what you guys think below. If you have had experience with cold showers and you find it helpful, or you agree with me and you think that it's pretty silly, but you know, I guess a reasonable question to ask. Thanks for watching this guy far, guys. I really appreciate you. If you haven't, please take a second to like the video. It really means a lot. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing if you like the content that I make. Remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. Catch you on the next one, guys. Peace and love. And guys, if you made it this far, appreciate you still watching. Obviously, our supplements are available. Vigor's back in stock. Our number one seller, Boost 
erection quality. It's getting amazing review. It also is amazing for workout, guys. You should really consider it. We also have our safeguard, which prevents fibrosis, helps keep your penile tissue healthy. We have our shield, which helps with nerve regeneration, help with nerve pain, and help keep your nerves healthy during PE. And of course, we have our Fortitude, the horny goat weed based supplement that helps with overall penile function, erection quality, libido, and actually literally is a natural PDE5 inhibitor like Viagra. If you guys are half hard flaccid, my hard flaccid course is available. We already talked about my enlargement course. All these links are in the description. If you need equipment for PE, peakmalephysique.com is going to be your best bet to get the best prices on all the high quality equipment you might need. If you need to reach me, my Patreon is patreon.com slash docink. You can join me on my subreddit r slash hink if you want to be part of these conversations for where some of these videos come from. And of course, Callie, our amazing editor, does great work. If you want to support him, the link is in the description and he'll put a QR code on the screen where you can, for the cost of buying him a coffee, support him and you'll get 26K wallpapers for you to use on your phone or computer or wherever you like. Anyways, guys, catch you on the next one. Peace and love.